India, our homeland, is a great country in terms of its geography and history. It has been well known for its cultural and commercial prosperity for a long time. The Aryan assimilation with the earlier Dravidian inhabitants has formed the classical Indian culture. Arabs came to India in the 8th century and Turks in the 12th century followed by European traders in the late 15th century. India is a land of a great diversity. It has a large extent and geographical variations which are reflected by the variety of natural resources. It spreads from the snowy ranges of the Himalayas in the north to Kanyakumari in the south. India has plenty of natural resources like sunshine, fertile soil, water, minerals, vegetation, animal life, etc. All these together contribute to the progress of our homeland. The name Bharat is accepted by the Constitution of India as the official name for the country. India is a democratic country which is divided into 29 states and seven union territories for the convenience of administration and regional development. Rajasthan is the largest state in terms of area, followed by Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, whereas Goa is the smallest state of India. India lies in the northern and eastern hemispheres. It has a central position in the southern part of the Asian continent. The Tropic of Cancer passes through the central part of India. The latitudinal extent of mainland India is from 8 degrees 4 inches 28 minutes to 37 degrees 6 inches 53 minutes north. Thus, its latitudinal extent is 29 degrees, 2 inches, 25 minutes. Away from the mainland, the southernmost tip of India is Indira Point, which is in the Nicobar Islands. It is located at 6 degrees, 45 inch north latitude. Latitudinal extent has impact on rainfall, temperature, and duration of days and nights. India's longitudinal extent is from 68 degrees 7 minutes 33 inches to 97 degrees 24 minutes 47 inches east. Thus, its longitudinal extent is 29 degrees, 17 inches, 14 minutes. Local time, sunrise, sunset, etc. are determined by longitudinal extent. India's standard time or IST as it's called is determined as per local time of this longitude. The Indian Ocean is the only ocean in the world that has been named after a country. And that is something to be proud of. I'm sure you agree. India is the seventh largest country in the world with a total land area of 32 lakhs 87,263 square kilometers. The distance from the westernmost point in Gujarat to the easternmost point in Arunachal Pradesh is about 2,993 kilometers. 
while the distance between the northernmost point in Kashmir and the southernmost mainland point is about 3,214 kilometers. It has a land frontier of about 15,200 kilometers and a coastline of about 7,517 kilometers. The present physical structure of India is the result of long geological process. India is known for its wide-ranging geological features as well as variety of minerals. Generally, India is composed of three geological units, the Himalayan mountains, the Indo-Gangetic plains and the peninsular plateaus. Besides geological formations, a number of processes such as weathering, erosion and deposition have created and modified the relief to its present form. Our country has all major physical features of the earth, that is mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. Nature has given us all, hasn't it? Earlier, all the major land masses were together and called as Pangaea, that is, a huge single landmass, a supercontinent. This landmass probably split into a northern Laurasia, that is, Eurasia and North America, and a southern Gondwana land, and these were separated by the Tethys Sea. The Gondwana land was a single landmass that included South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Convectional currents split the crust into a number of pieces. The Indo Australian plate drifted towards the north after being separated from Gondwana land. The northward drift resulted in the collision of the plate with a much larger Eurasian plate. So what happened? Hmm, it's quite interesting. Due to this collision, the sedimentary rocks which were formed at the bottom of the sea of Tethys were folded to form the Himalayan mountain system. This is a young and unstable zone with high peaks, deep valleys and swift flowing rivers. In due course of time, the depression between uplifted young Himalayas and old peninsular plateaus gradually filled with sediments deposited by the rivers flowing from the Himalayas in the north and the peninsular plateaus in the south. Extensive alluvial deposits led to the formation of the northern plains of India. What a beautiful way nature has to paint its canvas. Geologically, the peninsular plateau is one of the ancient and most stable land masses of the Earth's surface. The plateau is mainly covered by igneous and metamorphic rock with smoothly rising hills and broad valleys. The northward movements of the Indo-Australian plate have also changed the location and size of the Indian subcontinent over millions of years. The movement of plate led to stresses in the crust leading to folding, faulting, and volcanic activity. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are believed to have been formed along with the formation of Himalayas by volcanic activity. Let me tell you something amazing now. The height of the Himalayas is still increasing due to continued convergence. Yes, it is. 
The peninsular part is the oldest one and the center of all geological activities which took place in and around it. The oldest gneisses and granites can be seen in the Aravalli Mountains. It was a part of Gondwana land till it broke and drifted from the southern landmass.